You're listening to the world's smartest podcast network. When I go to Sacramento, I will pump up Sacramento. Sacramento. Some say the news is fake. Others say it's real. These two don't have the time to check. Instead, Turner Sparks and Michael Ira Kaplan turn to comics stationed around the globe to be their eyewitness reporters so that you can know what's really going on. This is Lost in America. All right, everybody, welcome to Lost in America, episode 285. My name's Turner Sparks. I'm Kaplan. You can find me at turnersparks.com. Buy my new album, Turner's. What, what's it called? Double Happiness. I almost said my previous album. Holy cow. Double well, Happiness. Buy, that too. Buy, buy them all. They're on yeah. iTunes or go to my Box website, it. turnersparks.com. I will sign it and send it to you. I'll sign you a CD, send it to you. Um, also, I have records coming in March. So Vinyl. Vinyl. I, you've, I've always it. said your comedy is better on vinyl. It just, it's better it, on vinyl. Sound. It's more natural. It, it's more crisp. Yeah. Crisper, yeah. <laughs> you get that little crackling sound when you first uh, put it on. Now it feels like you're in the club. It sounds that. like you're listening to like Frank Sinatra or something. <laughs> so it's really good. Uh, also, I'm on tour all this fall, November 4th. Wait, no, November 5th. I will be mm. at Hyenas Comedy Club in Fort Worth, Texas with the great Andrew Heaton. Get your tickets now. Everything's available at turnersparks.com. All right. Kaplan, you can find Kaplan on all social media platforms at Cap in America. Kaplan, what else? What, uh, you, anything else to promote? Um, no, just but Cap in NYC is my other fee for all your real estate news here in New yes, York City. Yes, if you want, if you're looking for a home, if you're looking you for a home, not use Kaplan. We will personally unsubscribe you from this podcast. <laughs> we will, we will ban you. We'll ban you. We'll never be a guest. You'll never be a listener. You'll never be allowed to do anything in this town. Well, well we're on the streets in New York. <laughs> accosting real estate agents to find out who their clients are. And yeah. if any of those cross over with listeners to this show, you're in trouble. Yeah, except exactly. And if the real estate agents are listeners of the show, well then, then it's okay. But no, come to me for all your real estate needs. I'm number one on the West side of Long Island city. Look at that. Number one on, <laughs> on Hunter's point South. Uh, exactly. Today we're talking about the election in Brazil. They have a big election coming up. Bolsonaro and uh, Lula. Is the the full name's a lot? It's a lot to yeah, say. Yeah, we just so, go with the Nikki nicknames. We'll go with Lula. I wrote down the full name so I can say it in a few minutes here. But that's what we're talking about. We have Carol Zoakley coming up in just a minute back. Uh, to to inform us on all that uh, what's going on down there. But Kaplan, if you want to support this show, and I know you do, go to patreoncom slash in America. Throw us five bucks a month. That gets you extra episodes of this show. And listen, yep. I've had people write in recently that mm. say I'm a Patreon subscriber. Cause I like you. I don't even want the extra content. I got <laughs> I enough other show. podcasts I listen to. <laughs> I don't need yeah. more of you guys, but I just want it. Cause I believe in you. I want to yeah. give you money. That works too. We That's a great attitude. Cause if I knew that no one's listening, we can really go off the rails on that show. We already do, but we could even do better. So if you guys tell us, if you subscribe and then write us in and tell us you're not even going to listen, that's even yeah. better. That's, <laughs> no it, that's even better. I don't have to be funny or anything. It's great. <laughs> we don't care if people listen at all. Just give yeah. us money. That's all we care about. <laughs> Money. Yes. Ten dollars a month, you get a T-shirt. Twenty dollars a month, you the get mug. your own ad on this show. Dennis Owens regularly writes in ads. You get a once a month ad. If we listen, we go out, we get other advertisers. You're going to hear them later in this episode. Mm -hmm. They pay way more than twenty bucks a month. I'll tell <laughs> you that. We're 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 very expensive. It's like Super Bowl. Over They're here, getting over here. screwed. If they yeah. knew they could just subscribe, give us twenty dollars a month, they would pay way less than ads. Yeah. yeah. But no, Magic Spoon. These people. The, I the hope big, they don't ever listen to our show is the point because then yeah. they, we, they, they could give us less money, but you give us 20 bucks a month, patreon.com slash lost in America. Go there. There's also a bidding war going on over there. Dennis Owens is currently giving us $40 a month to be our number one Patreon subscriber. We have other people at the 30, 35, 36. <laughs> Dennis if you Owens beat, is our benefactor. If you want to beat one. Dennis Owens, we'll yeah. say anything you want us to say on this podcast, whether I mean, it's he's legal the number or not. one lawyer in, in both sides of Kansas City, right? But if you want to, you want to, you want to be the number one lawyer in Kansas City, you want to replace him, give us $45. Well, he, so. Dennis <laughs> Owens is the only lawyer. <laughs> who is legally uh, uh, who can legally practice on the Missouri side and the Kansas city <laughs> side. So if you get a DUI on either side, you either side or get it both times going both ways. Yeah, like, if you get, <laughs> that'd be impressive. If you get a driving under the influence of alcohol, uh, I, I was going to say ticket, but I think you go to prison yeah. uh, hey, in Missouri anyway. and Kansas, Kansas, Dennis, <laughs> will get your man. You out. Yeah. 
And, All right, you know, Kaplan. Now, what do you know about Brazil? Let's get down to this. The Brazilian election. I know that they, they had a runoff. No, they had an, a, a primary or whatever you call it. And maybe not primary, an election on October 2nd. Everyone thought Lula was going to win outright. Bolsonaro, right. we've covered him on previous episodes of the show. He is, they call him the Trump of the tropics. That mm. might be, <laughs> that might be, uh, I don't know if it's, it's boil, if it's too, if it's simplifying it too much. It's, I don't think it is. That. He's very, yeah. He's got a little more, he's a little more, uh, I think he's even better than Trump in some ways. You know, he's, if, if you're for entertainment purposes. <laughs> okay. But, but yeah, so he, they, we thought he was going to lose. Just like Trump, the polls all said he had no chance, right? And Bolsonaro, then, yes. Yeah, Bolsonaro. And then he came out and he's forced to run off because nobody got 50% of the vote. That's yeah. How it so Lula, who was a previous president, got it 48% of the vote. Um, Bolsonaro got 43%. I guess that's close enough in Brazil to where they have to do a whole new election. <laughs> they again. didn't have 50%. That's the thing. So they're that's doing the that on October 30th. And it, I want to start here because it looks as if if Bolsonaro loses, he already has said he's going very Trump in saying that if he loses, he's not going to then that then the, the election saying, was rigged. He stole all of his bits. He's saying the voting machines are fake. I mean, obviously, the news is fake, but now the voting machines are suddenly broken. Even though he won with those machines last time, he's playing all the hits. So, yeah, so, I don't know if he's hoping that people in Brazil have never heard of Trump and they think he's coming up with all these original, ideas. Like, but this is very it reminds me of that guy in France who's doing all the Jerry Seinfeld material. Material in French, but helping yeah. just no one's ever heard of Jerry. No Seinfeld. one had ever. No one has Netflix over there. They Which, by the way, it seems to be working. That guy's huge. I forget his name, <laughs> but he's a very big comic. So is Bolsonaro if Bolsonaro loses, which it seems like he might, is he just going to is there going to be a January 6th again? Right. And that's is, I'm afraid of because we're like I'm happy in America and we're, you know, we, we think of ourselves as like the number one democracy. We got it all together. Brazil, I, it could be it could get could, could bad if they have a January 6th, I would think. So the military which I think is on his side. I want to find out if we think they would support it. So let's start yeah. there. We have the great Carol Zoakley coming back to the show. Brazilian comedian. You can see her on Netflix uh, doing stand-up comedy in Portuguese, I believe. Also, you can see her doing comedy in English all over the place. Uh, she's been on television in Canada, uh, I believe in the United States, cl- uh, performing in clubs all over New York City and the world. Carol, welcome to the show. How do we do on our synopsis of your <laughs> upcoming election? Yeah, hello guys. Thank you so much for having me back. Every yeah. time I'm in this podcast means that my country shit's going down. So yes. that's I'm kind of happy to, to see having you. us on. Yeah. yeah. Happy to see you guys, but you know. It's good that you haven't been on as much as a Ukrainian comedian has been on because that yeah. means <laughs> been, yes. that's the real they're, test. Yeah, they're having more airtime in this more podcast shit. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> going down. Yeah. So yeah, pretty pretty much yes. I would just disagree with the comparison between Trump and Bolsonaro because I okay. think that Bolsonaro is way worse. Oh, there you okay. go. Because, How's it so? yeah. better, as I say? But no. Yeah, because it <laughs> seems to me that Bolsonaro, uh, of course, they are all uh, uh, chasing money and this is all about making money. But I think that Bolsonaro has uh, a ideological uh, thing behind it. And I think think that Trump is just narcissism. <laughs> yes, that's, that's definitely <laughs> you know, true with Trump. Trump had no ideology. He didn't care. He's one of, from one of the self-proclaimed wealthiest people in America that he supports the poor is a, it's a hard, uh, that's a yeah. hard bridge to cross. But anyway, okay, so Bolsonaro yeah. actually does believe in what he's saying. I think the, he, he does because there's a, there's a, a researcher, like an intellectual in Brazil that she uh, studies uh, Nazi, Nazi uh, movements. Right. And she found a letter from Bolsonaro when he won as a congressman, like years and years ago, he wrote a letter to the biggest Nazi uh, website in South America saying that his win uh, was uh, that his um, his work as a congressman will be for the Nazis. <laughs> you know, Jeez. the, so Nazi, it is, the it biggest is Nazi. Bad. Where is the biggest Nazi place in South America? Is that in Argentina? Is the or be- biggest is- Nazi a website. A it, website. It, this website is already uh, out of air, like because they, you know, the, yeah, the, like, it got law. taken off the internet. It got taken off. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, that's a pretty big. It must have created <laughs> yeah. some a really bad website to the internet to take it off. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, uh, but this is all Cancel in the culture. internet uh, internet archives and stuff. 
Yeah, so right. that's why I think that he's way worse than, than Trump. But maybe he didn't know who he was writing to. Maybe he, I love how there's Kaplan's a translation. Defending a Nazi. <laughs> Jewish Michael Kaplan is defending. I just like to see young. You know, well, he, he, his school told him you have to write a letter to somebody famous. And yeah, you can say that. But then he takes pictures with the the Nazi, the, the woman from the Nazi party in uh, German. He takes a picture with the Hitler uh, lookalike. <laughs> you know, like, was, was that like Prince? Uh, yeah, Prince, Prince, Prince Harry. Prince, Prince, Prince Harry. Yeah. It's insane. Whoa, right. really? So he's got a Nazi fascination. Is what you're saying? Yeah, even, for even, sure. Yeah, he's, and that's a little. So yeah. what has he done? Um, so there's. M- so the thing about, I guess, if we're going to compare it in which, and normally on this podcast, we don't like comparing foreign countries. Yeah. politics to American because uh-huh. what we've learned is they never fit. It's yeah. never American media tries to distill it down to say, Oh, well, that's the Trump of Hungary. That's the Trump of fill in the blank France. Mm-hmm. That's that country. That country. But it never, once you actually research it, it never is that simple. Um, but here, at least with this election, a lot of it seems there's a lot of similarities, but yeah. when Bolsonaro got elected, he said he was going to do a million things. What of that now that his term's coming to an end, what of what did he say he was going to do? And then how much of that did he actually do? Well, the things that he promised, uh, uh, the things that he used to say, which was like um, indigenous people will not have any land. Uh, he said that people like poor people and like people of color, they will not have any money from the government and all of that he did you know okay. uh during his uh presidency uh during the pandemic do you remember that the gas emissions from the entire world went down because ever the, it was world the best was- thing for climate change that ever happened yeah exactly <laughs> only in brazil it it went up oh because he let the wood, the wood, the illegal wood sellers and, you know, the miners run free. They were like, so we had like more, like more uh, fires in the Amazon than ever during his presidency. So he helped some, a lot of people make, made a lot of money during his presidency. So the promise, the promise that he made from, for those people, he was amazing. He did okay. it very well. That's why that's why there's a lot of uh, uh, entrepreneurs and you know uh, business owners that are uh, you know backing him up. Yeah, right. He's good yeah, for much the bottom like line. That, I mean, yeah, that happened here. I mean, in terms of uh, the fighting for a certain percentage of people, did he say? Was his movement a populist movement? Because it sounds like it's not a populist movement. It sounds like this well, is it's a like a right wing populism for the rich, like, but yeah. not for the, it the is masses popular. kind of. Yeah. You could say that Trump w- was for the a populist, meaning he was going to take care of basically the white poor white people. Right. Yeah. And that got him elected. Was it similar with Bolsonaro? Yes, it is. It is similar because uh, he, Bolsonaro is a populist for sure. Because he lies, he lies so much. Like, for example, he was caught in a lie last week that is like, it may have cost him the elections. I don't think he was going to win anyways, but it was he was telling big. a story. Like, because, because in Brazil, like his movement, they're all like, if you, if you, la- if you let the left win, Brazil is going to become Venezuela. Right. That's what they, the big boogeyman is Venezuela. Yeah. yeah. That's why the, that's the comparison. So he was t- talking about a story that he was like in the north of Brazil and he saw some Venezuelan girls, 14 years old, 40, 14 years old. And he realized they were uh, prostitutes. Okay. And he wanted to, what he wanted to mean is that look at the situation of Venezuela, Brazil is going to be the same. Hmm. But when he was describing the situation, the encounter with 14 years old girls, he used a, a, an expression that it means, um, uh, I don't know how to say that in English, but you know, when you're flirting with someone, he was flirting with the 14 year olds. <laughs> yeah. So he used the, the expression that means that he was flirting with them. And now mm-hmm. people are like, this is the shit's going down. Like people are like, he's a pedophile. Oh. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and the families. 
<laughs> yeah, the families are fighting like, oh, mom, you you support the pedophile, you know, oh, like boy. it's insane. But in yeah. reality, the whole story was probably a lie. They're probably, the probably story didn't exist. It was a lie. When he was there, it was like um, those Venezuelan girls, they were in like a beauty school. So they were like, they, they were does, learning a, a, a craft to work. And does Brazil really need prostitutes imported? I mean, I, 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 <laughs> to I'm be not going to say I, I've been there or anything. To be honest, I don't think any country needs uh, prostitutes. Like, I think this is the oldest profession in the yeah. world, right? I think all the countries are filled with this. <laughs> they got enough. Apparently Brazil yeah, doesn't yeah. have enough. His... Uh, <laughs> So I guess his base that we read is is farmers, gun o- gun owners. Um, yeah, that sort of surprised me. I didn't realize, he, yeah, evangelical Christians, which all of those line up with politics in America, all on the yeah, same yeah. side. So I read something crazy that in his term since he took office, I guess 2017 is when he came in. Is that right? 2018. 2018. Okay, and then from then to now, the amount of private gun ownership in Brazil has doubled. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Still a long yeah. way to go, though, to catch us. I, I was looking yeah. at the numbers. There. We oh, still have yeah. like, we still have like dozens United times States. more guns in Brazil. But yeah, congrats. <laughs> yes. And the thing is, now uh, the police is finding like guns from the, the from the drug cartels and stuff uh, are bought legally. Oh, OK. Because they don't have to buy them illegally anymore. <laughs> because yeah. they have, you know, they have those people like. In Brazil, we call it uh, an orange. An orange is someone who is like, let's say I want to buy a gun, but not under my name. And I use Turner's name. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so the, the cartels, they use, you know. Legal names. They Legal use names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do they, so, they pay the people for that or the people don't even know they're using Probably, names? probably. Yeah. Probably. Is it because the idea is you're only allowed, there's still gun restrictions. You're only allowed to own a certain amount. Like my uncle owns 33 guns last time I checked. But he's a hunter. He's never killed a single person. He's Uncle a great Keith. guy. <laughs> Uncle Keith's a uh, salt of the earth. He's a saint. He's a he fights and I mean he not fights. He shoots in competitions and wins. But if he was Brazilian, he would he be allowed to own thirty three private guns? I'm not sure. Legal. He'd be an orange. He owns a legal. Sure. <laughs> or he I'm would have sure. to get. He'd have to pay me <laughs> yes. for my license to buy one for me. Yeah. Natalie. No, everybody. I don't. I think I. I, I'm not sure. I remember like my dad had a license for a gun. He had, my dad had a, a couple of guns too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I think two of them were licensed and the other ones, no. So like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't okay. think like, I, I think there's, there's restrictions. Yeah. But I'm not sure. And what about the rainforest? What's, and what, I know the rainforest is he's they still exists. These rainforests. I mean, I thought they got rid of those in the eighties. Oh my god! <laughs> All we've ever heard is the rainforest is yeah. going away, but it seems like they try. It's still there. Bolsonaro <laughs> took a big chunk out of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, so now this election's coming up. Oh, let's get into Lula. So Lula was president from 2003, 2003 to 2010. Yeah. Is that correct? 2010 or eight? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We read 2003 to 2010. Yeah, yeah, yeah. probably, yeah. And he left with 80% approval rating. Why did he leave? Well, he left because in Brazil, you can only have two terms. Okay. So he had to leave. But then um, uh, we had another president for two uh, mandates and was uh, from his party. Louis and they party. impeached her. It was yeah. a coup. It was a, basically a coup. We- they impeached her. And they put Lula in jail. Right. He went to jail. Car wash scandal, it's called. Exactly. Right? So, yeah. But no one could never prove anything. And now he is released from the 27 accusations. He's proven uh, innocent. And Lula was supposed to run in the 2018 elections. And a corrupt judge called Sergio Moro put Lula in jail. So Bolsonaro won. And now Bolsonaro, uh, th- this corrupt judge that put Lula in jail is with Bolsonaro. Ah. Like they're together, you know? But so was it a real scandal or just that there wasn't evidence that tied him to it? Or, or was the he whole was in thing? jail for 18 months? Right. Let's it, say it a, uh, the yeah. car wash scandal. What was the details of that scandal? I think we might so have talked about it last time. Just to remember. Yeah. yeah, it was basically corruption uh, involving uh, construction companies. 
Okay. And and the politicians. It was basically like a corruption scandal. And when he went to jail, t- uh, the timeline was he went to jail during the campaign, the 2018 campaign. So therefore, yeah. you can't run from jail. Okay. Yeah. And now he's out, though. The Supreme Court let him out. But was the idea that what his crimes were committed while he was in office, almost like 10 years earlier? What what was his crimes? What? Like, so normally if you commit a crime, you would go to jail within a year, six months after committing that crime. Mm. Right. When when did they say he committed the crime, the bribery crime? Yeah, they so everything was a little bit weird in that process because that process was, first of all, they, they, they put him in jail very fast. Like without okay. like, so everything like the, the legality of the, the process was not respected at all. Mm-hmm. And that's really something that worries people in Brazil because that shows that the institutions are not that strong, mm. you know? So the, Bolsonaro winning again, it's, very dangerous to Brazil, I think, and to democracy. I don't think we're going to recover. I don't think he's going to win. I think it's going to be tight. I don't think he's going to win. Bolsonaro, you don't think so? No. Bolsonaro's not going to win. He, lo- he lost the first round. Right, right. By I mean, six million votes. That's yeah. a lot of votes. So That's a lot of votes, yeah. If you just look at percentage, it's like, oh, that was tight. But then if you actually look at the amount of people that need to somehow change their vote or new people... Well, the people who voted for the uh, third and fourth party candidates, it seemed like one... One of those was like a more centrist person and they endorsed Lula. And the other yeah. one was very liberal, it looked like, from my research. So I would think most of those voters would go to Lula. But yeah. And, and there's a lot of scandals because now, like now the the, the, elect, the, the, the elections are going like full. Like it's crazy. Like, guys, it's crazy. And when I when you're talking about Brazil, we're talking about crazy. So the first in the first day of the second, the first, no, the second day, maybe the second day of the of the the second run, right? Of the, of people the unearthed a video from 2016, 2013, Bolsonaro saying that he was, uh, I think it's in the Amazon rainforest. And he, he says that he found a tribe that was a cannibal tribe and he wanted to eat someone, but, oh be, but, but he didn't have the chance to, but he would like to. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have the chance but, to, he had to yeah. leave. So now the opposition and even me, like he supports we're cultures. It, yeah. Yeah. So like even me, like we're all, he's a cannibal. He's a fucking cannibal. Damn her. Bolsonaro, damn her. And yeah. people like, Dom- like Jeffrey know? Dahmer. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He'll, damn get Dahmer, right? he'll get an LBGTQ. No. <laughs> yeah. Is so, that real though? Is it, or is this like tabloid stuff calling him a cannibal? Yeah. Like, did he no, really say no, that as a joke or was it like a, it was a, a real <laughs> interview. It was a real interview that he was giving to New York Times, actually, in 2013. (laughs) New York Times is a cannibal? Yes. So uh, this is something he actually said. So it's not fake news or anything. But people are just like, you know, building. But what's, I mean, are we not allowed? Are we discriminating against cannibals now? That's a culture. (laughs) That's a local culture there. He was, uh, you know, if that's. He's trying to immerse himself in the local culture. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Another funny thing. I'm sorry to to interrupt. Another funny thing. So this was the second day of the second run. The third day of the second run. Because Bolsonaro says that he's evangelical. But he doesn't have any really. This is like Trump, too. This is this fake evangelical thing. Exactly. 33% of your country is evangelical, right? So it's a big deal. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So uh, he says he's evangelical. And I don't know if in America is the same, but the evangelical people in Brazil, they are kind of against masonry because they think it's like a diabolical. Do you it's know what? the, the men, Masons? Masonry? Ma- the Masons. Oh, the Masons. The Freemasons. Yeah. Oh, the, the Freemasons. Free <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the free about, like mazes at a pumpkin patch or something. No? Yeah. The Mason, <laughs> the Mason. Yeah. My grandfather was a Mason. Whoa. Yeah, so they think that they are diabolical, that mm. they do satanist, you know. Did he? So in the uh-huh. third run, they found a video of Bolsonaro giving a speech in a Freemason place. Okay. And now it's Bolsonaro with devil, he's satanic, he is he's a cannibal satanist the file. Oh so now right. that's, that's cannibal. Where... He's really <laughs> stepping into a lot of landmines here. <laughs> but is he losing the ev- evangelicals with this? Or are they still with him? With the Mason thing, he 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 did, and also with the 
with the comment that he made about the 14 year old girl yeah. that yeah. that hurt him too. Oh, it did. Yeah. Okay. Did, yeah. did it? Cause in America, I feel like they look past like all of Trump's yes. And even like Herschel Walker, like they just look past things. They don't want to look past because of, but they, so some people he is going to lose, you think? Yeah, no, I think that this like ped- pedophilia is something that the right, the extreme right has been Doesn't using like it. it against the left for years. So they have a very they they have a a glass how can I say a glass glass ceiling? Glass, like they, you know, like you uh, cannot don't throw stones. Don't throw stones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the pe- that's good. They're consistent at least. Yeah. So the pedophilia <laughs> thing is something that they 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 make the people afraid. Right. So the one of the fake news that made him win the first election was that I think I talked about this before. It was like um, uh, a, we, we say that for babies is a sucker when they do. Pacifier? Just, oh, pacifier. Pacifier. Yeah. So they say oh. that the left want to give babies a pacifier in the format of a penis oh. to make them gay. Yeah. Since, <laughs> the, from yeah. birth. Yeah, you train yes. them from, from birth. birth to train people, guys to be gays like since birth. I know some very progressive parents who might do that in America. But <laughs> really? They really want to have a gay kid, I know. But yeah, that is crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. So so people believe so like talking about pedophilia and stuff like this is like something that people really I think yeah. So you know, I gave a, my so, son a big breasted pacifier just for the record, but no. <laughs> So Bolsonaro is a, um, let's see, a pedophile Satanist cannibal is where exactly. we're at right exactly. now. And Nazi. And Nazi. 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 That's kind of the four no-nos. Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like shooting as Trump said, he could shoot someone in Park Avenue. Of winning win. an election. It's hard to win <laughs> right? with all of them. Did right? he do anything that leaned Nazi-ish or leaned racist uh, during oh. his time in office? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. He compared like he was talking about because in Brazil we have some lands that are reserved, like, very little, not a lot that are reserved for uh, Africans that that came right during the, the slavery time. Yeah. And they some of them, they 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 were able to flee their the landowners and and create you know little tribes or little you know villages so some of those lands that are reserved for them so they have some lands and he was talking about visiting one of those uh places and saying they were all fat mm. they're eating too much because the government gives them money yeah. they're eating too much and then he compared the the like the way he said that they they are fat is that he compared the weight of the people with the with animal weight. Ay, ay, ay. You know when you say like, oh, this thing, this this bull. How yeah. can you say in English like this bull weights? No, we don't say kilos. We don't like say tons. 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 Yeah. yeah, but yeah. but the expression he used is an expression you use for animals. Got it. Right. So yeah. that was one. Um, Another is that now he's saying because Lula goes to the favelas and people like and he is, uh, you know, giving speeches and people come and it's big, like, you know, and now he says that uh, the criminals support Lula. But what he's saying is that everybody that lives in a favela are criminals. Mm. And that's not true at all. Like 98 percent of the people, there are just workers. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just the poor. So that's another. It's a weird and, move to because he's basically he has like a lower middle class base too, right? But he's basically going after the poor and saying they're all crib or yeah. in the cities, I guess. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. similar. I mean, if he's going after the poor, uh, I guess like people of different races, then that's yeah. the move, right? That's the same thing Trump did. Trump supported the poor white people, yeah, but well, then, yeah, I mean, uh, marginalized yeah. the other <laughs> the poor people of color. So, yeah. all right. So it seems like he's going to lose. Uh, yeah. If he loses, will what do you think will happen? Do you think it'll be a similar thing? With, do you think he'll? Uh, it seems like he'll try to stay in office. Correct? Yeah, yeah, because he's going to go to jail if he doesn't. So, I oh, think, really? Yeah, we we talked time. about him being impeached last time, right? Like whatever. Like, is that what you're talking about? Like that type of thing where he could? Yeah. What do we go to jail for? 
Oh, there's so many crimes. Like this man, he did, like, for example, during the pandemic, we we're talking about what he actually did that was racist or Nazi. Yeah. For example, during the pandemic, he made everything to prevent COVID care to arrive to indigenous people. He denied water to those people during the pandemic, like uh, drinkable water. Mm. So like indigenous people died, died, died. A lot of them. How actually, did he deny them water? How does that even, how do you even well, go about doing that? Well, you know, when you have like, um, well, he's, he's the, he's the president. So right. he had like to sign something, uh-huh. you know, like he had to sign something to send water, you know, because oh. people yeah, like, they, and he was like, no. water, like, yeah, and he's like, well, or whatever. Yeah. It's like, no, I don't want to waste. I don't, I don't want to use this money for this. No, you know, <laughs> So do you think he'll actually go to prison or do you think it'll be like Trump where people are always saying he's about to go to prison, but he never actually goes to prison? I think that I think that there's a lot of people that hate him very much. Mm-hmm. And we think that he needs to pay for something. Otherwise, this will be very bad. On the other hand, it's like Trump here. Like it's is a man with a lot of support. So putting a, a guy like that in jail sometimes takes takes time for you like to find, you know, but he has committed a lot of crimes in his presidency, like electoral crimes. Now he's using uh, public money to to, you know, to promote himself mm. so a, a lot. Like even uh, during the pandemic, he didn't answer 81 emails from Pfizer. So a lot of he people gets, wait, the emails are emailing him. <laughs> so the Pfizer, I don't know if you guys know that, but Brazil has a, a public health system and it was before Bolsonaro, like the best vaccination system in the world, one of the best. Oh. So when the pandemic hit, Pfizer wanted to use Brazil as a, a testing place or like as a, a testing, like, you know, like to show the world how this can work. Yeah. So Pfizer started trying to connect with Bolsonaro and Bolsonaro didn't answer. I mean, email, you get a lot of emails. I get so much. Junk. You're like <laughs> Pfizer. It might be junk. Why what is would that? He- 81, 81 emails. Why would he be against the vaccine? Like, yeah. Why would he be against the vaccine? That was before it was because, even cool to be against the vaccine. Yeah. It's like so it was early. early. <laughs> it was like- no, he's against the vaccine to this day. Right. One is because he didn't want he didn't want to waste money with that because he want to use the money, money, the, the state money for to to for himself to steal okay. and to buy votes, Congress yeah. votes. OK, so he doesn't want to give money to to things that are needed. Oh, he he had to, to pay for part of it. It wasn't going to. OK, oh. so he didn't want to buy vaccines from Pfizer, but he after a while, he started trying to pur- purchase that vaccine from India. And he was keeping from himself one dollar for each for each vaccine. Vig. Because oh, Pfizer, really? because Pfizer didn't want to didn't want to be corrupt with him. They didn't want to so give they, him a dollar for every vaccine. Yeah. So he went and found a vaccine somewhere else. Yeah. Oh so my we, God. we just had like, but but then Brazil, the Brazilians are very strong men. But then the, the a Brazilian Institute created a vaccine. And that that was the vaccine that started to vaccinate people there. Okay, it took a while to Moderna Pfizer to arrive there because of Bolsonaro. And Brazil had a much worse record than most countries with deaths and everything with the vaccine. Number right. one, if you Number compare, right, if you yeah. compare, like uh, capita, I mean, it's a tough country because I mean the favelas we talked about are very crowded and everything. So you think if you really care, this country is a, need the vaccine more than like anywhere really. Exactly, exactly. And now the Brazil like. Almost 100% of the population are vaccinated. Because Brazilians, they, they go and vaccine. Even the Bolsonaro supporters are vaccinated. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Is you he know? vaccinated? He says he's, he isn't. But he, he his vaccination card uh, is in secret. Oh. Ah. Oh, okay. He put it like, you know, he put it like as a, as a secret. Yeah. Well, when Trump tells his followers that he got vaccinated, they boo him. <laughs> they do actually. He gets booed in I, public. He stopped, I think he stopped bringing that up, but he did. <laughs> he even brought he brought up the booster. They went nuts on him at a rally. Oh, when he got the booster, they and he said out. he got the booster. Everyone started booing him, and he's like, yeah. no, no. At his and own he, rally, 
Yeah. He's not used to getting booed, so he moved. You, you know, you're a comedian. You know, you cut stuff out of the act when it gets booed. <laughs> you don't do it again. So exactly. It doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't exactly. work in a. Yeah, you got to test it out. All yeah. right, we got to take a break, everybody. But when we get back, I want to find out what it's going to look like to have Lula as a president because it seems like that's the way we're going. Uh, Kaplan, yeah. we're part of the world's smartest podcast network. We are. That is us. That is uh, Doctor Andrea Jones Roy. And the Majoring in Everything podcast. That is Andrew Eaton and the Political Orphanage. Once again, he and I, November 5th, will be at Hyenas Comedy Club in Fort Worth, Texas. Get tickets now. All those shows are great. Go listen to all of those. And of course, uh, keep listening to our show, Kaplan. And now, a word from your local sponsor. All right, we're back. Thank you, local sponsors. Wouldn't it be great if it was Dennis Owens, also a local sponsor? No. If he's, if he, yeah, if he's doing it both <laughs> he just ways. Bought it at time. <laughs> yes. Law Amazing. Firm. Uh, all right. So uh, now that it looks like, well, so what are the chances? It does, as Kaplan said earlier, it seems like the military supports Bolsonaro. The police, the police yeah. support Bolsonaro because he's like a tough on crime, tough on guy, crime guy or something. Even though he gives people guns, he's tough. Even on though crime. he gives everyone guns. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So do you think that if he loses, which it looks like he will, what are his chances of keeping the government? I think zero because he has he has some support in the military and in the police, but it's not. It's not that big. I don't think it's enough for him to actually, um, you know, try a coup, you know. So So I think that it's going to be hard because we had the midterms elections and a lot of uh, extreme right wing people won. So Lula is going to have a hard time. And now the the Brazil is Brazil is broken because Bolsonaro, you know, the pandemic, the pandemic made everything difficult for every country. But Brazil is even worse. Right. So I think Lula's going to have a, a hard time. Well, Lula will have a hard time too because what isn't the the Congress, the Senate? Is it? It's mostly it's still uh, right leaning, right? It's going to be. It is right. It is right leaning, and now a lot of extreme right people also enter right the, the game. And so, so, so they're going to make Lula's life miserable, I guess. So they're not going to be get, hard. Yeah, it's right. going to be hard, and I think that we entered and not only in brazil but i think in the whole world we entered in a time that we have to be active politically right the people because the politician like the the it is too like it's too is a war right those people they want to the, like the extreme right wing they want to take power and they have crazy ideas <laughs> like, yeah. i mean like it's no well, good. Th- well, that's what like I saw when the, the day that they went to the runoff, like the the all the stocks are up because they were like, oh, there's this fear that like Lula would like nationalize oil or anything. But like that's not going to happen, right? Because he can't even he's not even going to have the the power to do that, even if he wants it. Right. I mean, that's. Yeah. I mean, like this is so like silly because the thing is, uh, Bolsonaro represents um, a liberal economy. So right. his minister of economy is a guy who wants to privatize everything. The guy wanted to sell Brazilian beaches <laughs> for to like privatize, you know, the ocean, right? Really? Privatize the, the guy ocean. is insane. <laughs> the guy that is a Bolsonaro uh, um, uh, financial, how can you say like minister of economy? Yeah. Was a guy who, who was in, in Chile doing that, neoliberal experiment right the experiment. we've talked about that oh yeah. the chicago yeah. boys the chicago boys the chicago boys he was one of the chicago boys yeah. so a lot of people who benefit from this kind of ultra liberal economy wants wants bolsonaro sure but the thing is lula is not a communist lula is a left a center center left mm-hmm. so he's not going to make banks lose money he's not gonna make nothing is right. it but he's gonna help a little bit poor people that's I mean, all he's been in power before and he wasn't yeah uh, in brazil actually was doing pretty well then i think it was during like an oil boom and everything but yeah everybody I mean, was making a lot of money i think yeah. when i kept on i i, I might have missed it but you were talking about stock markets and the, it looks like the economy might be going down if if bolsonaro loses i think anytime there's a change in government 
that just that happens automatically for like a couple months until they figure out what the new government's going to be. And yeah. then it stabilizes. And especially if this is a centrist, I mean, that's being yeah. more predictable is usually good. Yeah. And what yeah. is he? He's actually proposing like just giving what does he actually propose? It's so outlandish, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Like he's just Bolsonaro to, or Lula? Uh, no, Lula that people are would find outlandish. I mean, oh. is there anything specific? What's or? his platform? No, yeah. no that it's very reasonable. It's just like. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, uh, it's very reasonable guys. There's nothing like really, uh, it's just like, I'm. he want to come, come back with like a emergency relief that a relief fund that he used to give people that helped people. He wanted to, uh, come back with some infrastructure that he has built and is gone now to help, uh, the poorest regions of the country. And I mean, there's nothing to keep the Amazon rainforest, I guess. Yes. Yeah, protect yes. Amazon. Protect I mean, the Amazon. What a commie. But it's <laughs> not, <laughs> loves his trees. Yeah. <laughs> but it's nothing like, it's nothing radical at all. Like at all guys, like at right. all. You're not becoming, he's not Chavez. You're not, it's no, not you're returning no, to Venezuela. It's not Fidel just, Castro. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people were calling Biden a communist and Biden's like the most milk toast middle yeah. of the road guy. There yeah. is any, was he, I mean, I was reading an interview with Lula this morning and they were asking what's the difference between his 2002 campaign and this campaign 20 years later. And he was saying it sounded a lot like Biden in the sense that he was saying, well, this time democracy is what's at stake. So it's not the issues, it's democracy. And that's kind of what, it's really what Biden did. He almost, he didn't have many yeah, issues running against at all. The, cra the crazy he brought person, up. Basically. He just kind of said, if you vote for this guy, we won't have a democracy. If you vote for me, we will. And that was kind of, he kind of kept it simple. Is Lula doing a similar thing? I think it depends on, on where Lula is speaking. Cause I okay. think Lula, cause Lula is a guy who he was a poor, he was a, a poor worker. He, he, Lula was, is a guy from the, the favelas. Like Lula was a poor man. Lula, uh, his mom is illiterate. You know what I mean? Like Lula right. is a guy from the people, right? So I think it depends on where he's talking. When he is making a speech at Favela, I don't think he's going to talk about democracy. I think he's going to talk about you guys cannot eat. There's 33 million people uh, experiencing hunger in Brazil right now, you know? Right. So maybe that's what I've been noticing because this, it is true. It, I, I think that is true. If Bolsonaro wins again, I think our democracy is over. I think that's true. But I don't think every single voter is worrying about this or has this, you know, because people work too much. Like people don't follow the news like I, like we right. do. You know what I mean? Like people who have kids, have work, have like, they don't care, you know? Mm. They should be so, listening to this podcast. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think that it depends on where he's, he's speaking. I think he says, maybe, maybe he talks, you know, differently. Sorry. Just give me a second, everybody. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, I can cut this part out. <laughs> it's okay. He's he's hiding out in Colombia somewhere. I'm in my brother's house. He's in, in Escobar's. Uh, yeah. no. <laughs> uh, so, how many times can Lula run again? If he because he's already been president for two terms, correct? Oh, right. Yeah. Can you do it two more? Is that how it works? Or is it unlimited? Think, if you as as long as they're not consecutive. I I'm not sure because I think this is the first time it's happening in Brazil. I think he can run for re-election again i don't think he will i don't think he will okay. i think that lula is running for office now for one reason only it's because he is the only politician strong enough to beat bolsonaro right he's the biden okay. he's the yeah. guy he's like i'm coming yeah. back coming back off the bench to yeah we have a crazy person yeah we have other like good and viable candidates but no one has the strength that he has like but he's very popular right okay. and bolsonaro is a populist too 
So it's sort of like he's pop. There's like a left wing. I saw someone frame it as like left wing populism versus right wing populism. But he it sounds like he's more. He's not really a populist, though, right? He's more running to the Lula? sanity. Yeah, Lula is more like the left wing sane sanity candidate. I, is, is the yeah, you know, I think I would say that Lula is a populist so yeah. in a in a good way it, because he is very popular and he talks to people. He's I would say he's a populist. I would say, okay. yeah, I would say. And what about comedy wise? Do you are you going back to Brazil much to perform? I am. I I went to Brazil twice this year already. Okay. And I probably go there next year again. I, I mean, if Bolsonaro wins, I don't know what's going to happen, honestly. <laughs> really? Because I, and also because I'm very vocal against him. Yeah. And, and I'm a little bit afraid, to be honest, because those people are um, crazy. Do you talk about it in your stand-up when you were there? Politics, oh, my stand-up or? online. I do. Like, because I got, guys, I'm great because I'm obsessed about, of course, the elections. Um, and... The, w- the way I think we release our angst is comedy. So I'm like, you know, I'm making videos about Bolsonaro and Satanism and being Satanist, and yeah. being, you know, <laughs> of course, I, you know, and there was like a video that I posted today that was like, this is Brazil, so much Brazil. So there's a, there's a guy who's a Bolsonaro supporter and then he says he's a Orthodox priest but he's not, but he wears like everything. Where's and he up? went to a poor uh, neighborhood to, you know, give support to Bolsonaro and talk to people. And the children, children in the neighborhood make him back away. Get out of here. Lula, Lula. And, oh and this is the, sign, the Lula sign. And people are like, Lula, Lula, the children. You can go to my Instagram later and take a yeah. look. It's the funniest shit ever. <laughs> the children doing it. <laughs> so do you feel it, like, are you scared at all? You feel it's, you're in danger when you're performing in Brazil? I mean, is anyone going to throw a beer at you? And any of these Bolsonaro supporters like they do here in America? <laughs> oh, I think before it was already like dangerous to perform in Brazil, to be honest with you. But now I think it is. But I also to honestly, I, I'm, I, in my mind, I'm like, when I'm on stage, I'm, I have no fear. And if someone comes to me, I'm going to come for them. Like, fuck it. You know, I don't yeah. care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <I see. laughs> That's <Right>. how Turner is. <laughs> I mean, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell jokes. So I mean, because I guess man, that's, all, I mean, like, that's all we're all trying to do. Right. But you know what? Funny. Like, yeah, but you know what? Like when, when I started doing comedy in Brazil, I was one of the first women doing comedy and people didn't, actually have the experience of seeing women doing walking up on stage with a microphone. Right. Yeah. So I actually had to have a thick skin since the beginning, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, this is not new for me. So like, you're used to it. Who cares? Yeah. yeah right? It's crazy. I mean, I think it's like globally now, like I don't, I'm not a political comedian. I'm not an American political comedian at all. I'm interested in global politics, but, um, I don't talk about American politics on stage. Still, I've had people yell like, let's go Brandon at me and stuff like that. (laughs) And a bunch of other stuff, which is just so puzzling because I don't even bring it up. Right. So they just look at you and they assume you're. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm just like, well, no, I don't know what they assume. I I would assume they would think I was, uh, uh, I don't, I don't know. I guess it's hard to say. I think it's when I, in certain parts of the country, just by say by the introduction that you live in New York or saying that you live in New York, people think they assume they know where you are. Uh, and then people start yelling at me. And so I would imagine if you do talk politics on stage, it must be like bonkers right now. Yeah. Um, why do you think that, and this is for everybody, why do you think that this is all happening at the same time? Meaning the United States, uh, I guess, France, uh, Italy, 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 Brazil, yeah. why are, why is it so heated? I mean, I just read that 70% of Brazilians polled recently said they don't feel comfortable saying their political stance in public right now because of violence and yeah. just like harassment. Mm-hmm. But I don't remember that being the case. And I would, I, would, I don't remember that being the case like 10, 15 years ago anywhere uh, or 20 years ago. Yeah. Right. So why, what's going on now that this is all happening, you think? Well, I think that we are at a breaking point. I think we are changing. I think uh, we're changing. I think the entire world, I think uh, 
it's changing. Like the power dynamics are changing. I think everything is changing. And I think we are at a breaking point in uh, everything is like crazy. Everything's like this, you know, like crazy. Yeah. It feels like social media must have something to do with this. Oh, I know too well, much time in front of screens is hurting, killing everyone. Yeah, from all sides. right. I mean, I read people Bolsonaro so angry. is like yeah. great with social media, right? Isn't he a really a his big tweeter? Um, skilled right? at, or his team well, is skilled at controlling narratives. Through they have a lot media. of money. They have a lot of money. So what what is what happens with those? Because I think that this <clears throat> extreme right wing movement is international. Mm -hmm. They have, of course, they're independent, but they have some like, they have some, you know, uh, like a center or something like ideological kind of, you know. Yeah. Um, I do think that social media has everything to do. And I think that ju they just have a lot of money because Bolsonaro has this in huge WhatsApp and Telegram net. Okay. He has people working for him. He has He has money to push for you know, uh, uh, to boost his things, his pull, you know? So I think this is all, uh, it's less about intelligence and more about money. Sure. And, and, and the message, I mean, you say they're, they're independent, but we, I was watching a clip, I was interviewing Bolsonaro supporters and they were talking about how he's going to save the family. Mm -hmm. And it sounded so similar to what we heard in Italy. Yeah. As if like the family is under attack, this idea yeah. Yeah. from the left. So I find so. it interesting that, um, Around the world, the well, in in uh, like you, I guess Trump would say America first to make America great again. In Italy, they would say make Italy first. Brazil, you say Brazil first. But then, how are these people all allies with each other if their inherent point of view is <laughs> that point. my country is better than every other country? It's a great. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't understand. How <laughs> That's just uh, yeah, nationalism and. Uh you have the opposite point of view of anyone. No, because there's a respect country. for that's why they, that's why the right will like, they'll have a respect for like even Russia. They go in the, well, I respect that Putin cares about his country kind of thing. It's like, yeah. it's like Putin's a weird cancel culture. I've heard people yeah, in America yeah, saying that. Tip of the cap. <laughs> Obviously yeah. my country's better, but I respect you for liking your country. Kind yeah. Of yeah. I think that, that's a, that is a method. I think that comes from, um, from a Spanish guy. I forgot his name. Now this guy, he create of, I forgot his name, but it's very important. Like this guy was the beginning of everything. I think he started with, um, with a campaign to help, you know, the poor and stuff. Franco or is it retirement? not Franco is a, is a, is an obscure guy. No one oh. actually knows about this guy very much, mm. but he created, um, he was the one who invented like the, the, the way you scare people with abortion. Okay. You know, so he was the one. So they have like pretty much a script that they've been following for, you know, scare people with uh, pedophilia and scare people with yeah. abortion. They have some talking points. I think the pedophilia is newer. I feel like that just came out of nowhere the last few years. This Everybody's a pedophile. Is that well, a, and yeah. then Epstein didn't help. Epstein <laughs> didn't help. But, yeah. Q, you know, the Q movement said everyone, Nancy oh, Pelosi. Q Anon. Yeah, the QAnon movie. Yeah, everyone's yeah. a pedophile. Apparently, I didn't realize that. Tom Hanks, Satan is pedophile. <laughs> Satan, yeah, Satan. Uh, yeah. but you're yeah, right though. They do follow the same script. It's almost like they yeah. get the greatest hits and then they just mm -hmm. play it for their country. It works. They play what and they works. They have money. They have yeah. money. Honestly, it's money. Yeah. Though, like, there's a lot of rich, rich, rich people that support those people. Sometimes um, we don't know. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. openly. Sometimes not. Yeah, and it's almost like when it works in one country. Everybody else just uses the same playbook. They go, well, yeah. if that worked for them, I can, I'll can. i just use the same system and get it to work here. It seems to be working, although not totally. I mean, Bolsonaro got elected once. He's not going to get reelected, most likely. Me Trump think. got elected once. He didn't get reelected. Hmm. So yeah. you know, who knows what happens in the That's future. That's why we're worried that you're going to copy the January 6th playbook, but hopefully not. So. Yeah, I think hopefully. he will. No, I think he will. Yeah. He will, but I don't know how it's going to go, but I don't think he's gonna, I don't think he can actually, uh, coup, like promote a coup. He can't take think. over the country. No, 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 no. But he will like a, ma a mess is going to be for sure. They're going to make a mess. And what's Lula's, uh, foreign policy that has, has he said much about how he'll deal with other countries? So Lula is, uh, is a very good diplomatic, uh, person. And Lula has one thing that 
that I love about him is that he is very much a supporter of the other South American countries. So he's always been um, advocating to have um, more dialogue with the South American countries and maybe even like be stronger together. And this is something that the right wing and the extreme right wing uh, thinks is the worst, uh, blah, blah, blah. You know, they, yeah. and I think this is very good. It's like the European Union argument all over again or with Brexit. And everything. It's like, we don't want to be, we want to be independent, right? That's what they're right saying. We don't want yeah, to that's, yeah, that's so, see, I, I, uh, I, my opinion is that that's silly. I think the world is so connected that we should actually think about like a more centralized kind of, you know, Sure. Uh, um, great. All right. Well, I think uh, I think that's it. So October 30th is the date. Oh, we my will God. Find out. When when would Lula come into Pat? When would he take oh, office? January 1st. Oh, boy. Oh, can so I ask we one might have question. a Christmas coup? A hollow, yeah. <laughs> one question, actually, when, when the uh, I Perhaps. forgot to mention this, when the uh, the election was happening, the first round, I was in the elevator in my building here in New York and I was with this uh, two Brazilians and their dog, and they were going to the uh, the consulate. You could vote, I guess, by going to the consulate. And they were all wearing all red, and their dog was wearing all red. Is that, I want, I didn't know, I didn't, they go, we're, we're supporting our candidate in red. Is that Lula, or is that? It's Lula. It's uh, the, actually, it's the opposite, <laughs> because in America, I didn't, red. I didn't look at, yeah. Right. Red is, yeah, red is Republican, but it's also <laughs> communist, so it makes no. <laughs> yeah, so Lula, Lula is red, yeah. Okay, so I will, I will promote that. When I see them in the elevator next time, I will tell them to listen to this episode. Yes, please. They are nice people. They're good people. Yeah, their dog was all, it was so cute. Their dog was wearing a whole red outfit they put together for, Yeah, it was like two yeah. bro brother and a sister. So how did you vote? Did you vote? Did you go to a consulate or can you vote by mail? I actually, I vote in Toronto. I don't vote in New York. Oh, you went to Toronto to vote? I have to go. No, I didn't go. I couldn't. Oh, oh you yeah. didn't vote. I, mean, part of the I couldn't. That's, That's why you didn't get to 50%. You got to change your district. Vote. <laughs> yeah. I, I couldn't, unfortunately. Well, yeah. let's get you to Toronto before the before October thirtieth. We'll, 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 we'll oh drive God. you up there. So. I want to go to Toronto. Let's 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 so, do like a Patreon for me to go to yeah, Toronto. Yeah, yeah. Comments, <laughs> so, yeah. That is it. Thank you so much, Carol. Carol, how can our audience um, follow you? Thank you. I'm on TikTok. I'm on um, Instagram at Carol Comedy, and that's it. Carol Comedy. That's pretty good. Yeah. Good, yeah. good handle. You must have got that yeah. early. Carol yeah. comment in Instagram, and but on TikTok, I'm comedy Carol, which comedy I love Carol. it more. Comedy oh, first good. Carol comedian on Instagram. <laughs> comedy Carol. Carol that Burnett is it. Uh, Thank you everybody for listening. Carol Zoakley, thanks for being on the show. Best thank of you. luck on the October 30th election, <sighs> and more importantly, the January 1st transition of power. <laughs> Capital, January 1st coup. That's it. What should we do? Uh, I just got a lot smarter, so it's time now to go get lost. Get lost, everybody. <laughs>